what I'd like to say before I start reading those is that in all the work that I do and in my entire practice, the way I live my life, I think of creativity and violence as opposites. That every violent act I can think of relies or is embedded in a system, a value system that al already exists and seeks to control on some level. And creativity is the opposite of that. Was the cop kneeling on George Floyd's neck as he lay gasping for his last breath, praying to his white Jesus? Was he taking a knee to shine a light on police brutality? Was he brutal when he rocked back and forth like a hobby horse applying pressure? Did the rocking make him think about his childhood? Was he daydreaming with one hand in his pocket, cowboy ritual applying more and more pressure as George Floyd managed to cry out for his dead mother, I can't breathe, please, your knee is on my neck, I can't breathe, I can't. The girl walking home alone doesn't know what to do about the stranger who calls her name. He claims he has a gun. His knowing her name is a gun. He blocks her way. Rail track, chain link fence, no parking sign. It's like that test she had in school yesterday, having to choose which animal doesn't belong. She guessed it was the cow. This girl knows nothing of farms. On her left, the empty tennis club. In front, the man who snarls he will kill her. Let me see the gun in her piccolo voice. A train rushes by. If she were in it, her life would be different. The world is full of noise. Weeds, cigarette butts, rusted car, locked shed. She runs. She doesn't know if he can keep up. He's too old to catch her. He screams again, I'll kill you. She doesn't look back. To be the roundness of the bowl and the bowl itself, container of words, ideas, overflow, knowing Alice would be there to receive your brilliance and open it to the world. Every plate, cup, and saucer has a function, a duty if only to simply revel in the dance of the divine, elegant under life, you're secreted between you against the greedy predictable of the conventional. Whom needed whom more? Blazing moment Gertrude met you for the first time, having recognized each other in new forms, the soul gaze like the meeting of Shams and Rumi. Paris, where you two walk the labyrinth, going from stranger to friend, the golden thread Alice carried charged you so much you would follow it to your dying breath. Nikhil convinced himself that he'd opened Sharma's heart to the idea of becoming a father. But the exuberance of this conclusion led to certain practical questions. Sharma's wife would carry the child, but where would the child live? In Sharma's house in the village or in Nikhil's house here in the city? If she lived in the village, which Nikhil admitted was the safer option. How would Nikhil father her? How would she receive a proper education? These questions consumed the hours. When he went to check on his tenants, he was distracted and unable to focus on their concerns. A leaky toilet, a broken window, the group of vagrants who'd squatted outside one of his properties, all these matters seem trivial compared to his imagined child's needs. Light, like soaping cups, queer to slight slippery, as flat porcelain, sweeter than fat, a flute without flirt, so tone deaf. Direct gaze into yourself. See straight to the other side. Mythologize, put yourself back together the best you can with paint, with pen, with purpose, even with your chemotherapy withered bald held self, don't flinch, reinvent. With one leg gone, I flung the limb. I adapted the adage, 
Why do I need feet when I got wings? Whenever facing the impossible, never say die. Unfurl, fling, flare, fly. A sentence is a system. Sunlight outlines. There is so much lightning in the body. A cloud is a bribe, sometimes a fault. In this world, everything rots. When I clap, I can't stop. My lust for prisms, each hue a song. So thanks again to everyone for listening. <laughs>